Chair Thompson? Present. Vice Chair Lee? Present. Board Member Bolte? Present. Board Member Hirsch? Present. Board Member Liu? Present. Okay, we have a quorum, thank you. Thank you. Our uh, next item is oral communications. The public may speak on any item not on the agenda. Do we have any members of the public that wish to speak? Uh, Chair Thompson, we currently do not have any uh, comments. All right, thank you. Our next item is agenda changes, additions, and deletions. No changes at this time. Okay, thank you. Our next item is city official reports. Uh, yes, so good morning. My name is Jody Gerhardt, manager of current planning. And so you see the schedule before you. We have updated the schedule because um, to say that we are going to have all virtual meetings um, until the end of the year. Um, council at their recent hearing discussed uh, hybrid meetings and the governor's order. Um, we're now on a sort of like month by month um, allotment that council needs to renew um, that they would like to stay in hybrid fashion. And so they have done that so far, saying that we will um, actually stay virtual until November 1st. And then council will go back to start these hybrid meetings where we will be um, partly in person, uh, partly virtual. And council will kick that off. We'll make sure that all the technology works and those sorts of things um, so that other boards and commissions can start coming back in the January timeframe. So next slide there. And so we do have for the next hearing, which is October 21st, um, we have 2609 Alma, which is a four unit project. We also have 160 Waverly, uh, which is a triplex, that's a second hearing. And then we're looking to um, start our second discussion about the ARB awards. Um, I know I promised we would try and do these uh, in person, um, but I don't, I don't think it's possible at this time. Um, I talked to the chair and the vice chair and just the logistics around it. Um, you know, yes, we could maybe be outside, but then it would be harder to do a presentation to show pictures. So there's just lots of complications. It makes it easier to keep that virtual for the moment. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, our next item is our action items. Um, so we'll go, we'll go right into it. So this is 2585 East Bayshore Road, a request for a minor, a minor board level architectural review to allow the removal and replacement of building facade materials, addition of outdoor patio employee amenity space, replacement of rooftop mechanical space, new landscaping throughout the site and changes to the parking lot. Applicant also seeks a director's adjustment for reduced loading load space. Um, are there any disclosures? I disclosed that I visited the site. Thank you, board member Belte. Uh, <clears throat> I visited the site uh, and of course the board at City Hall. Thank you, board member Hirsch. Go ahead. Board member. So uh, that um, I visited the site and the color board. I also did additional research in the Wisong Shosugi Van Wood siding. And also, I was on the ARB for the um, previous tenants um, uh, on this particular site. Okay. Yeah. Small disclosed um, visited the site and also was on the board back in 2006, I believe. Thank you. And I also visited the site and the materials board at City Hall. Um, okay. Um, I'll hand it over to staff. Thank you, Chair Thompson. Uh, Samuel Gutierrez, uh, staff planner assigned to this project. I will be uh, running the presentation. Um, so let me share my screen. Okay, can everybody see the screen? Perfect. Thank you. Right. Thank you for that confirmation. Okay, so this is uh, once again, 2585 East Bayshore. Uh, 
mainly consisting of facade and site improvements, as mentioned before. Um, here we could see an, a rendering of the proposed uh, new elevation. And again, to touch on the background and context, the again, uh, the project proposes to update the exterior building facade with new materials and colors, provide outdoor amenity spaces for employees, redesign the site plan to improve parking lot and landscaping, infill two existing courts within the building that are open on two sides, the two sides being one to the exterior um, elevations and then one up to the sky above. So here we could see um, an aerial shot of the site indicated in that uh, red rectangular area. Um, it is towards the end of this section of the East uh, Bayshore Corridor. It is zoned R-O-L-M uh, with the combining district E-D-A-D. -D, um, and it is a one acre size parcel. The existing single story office building was built back in 1969. And it does share a common driveway with the adjacent property located along this wider portion of the driveway here. So that is a shared driveway with this site that is just uh, south of the project site. Moving on, here's another just perspective view of the site. We can see mostly parking lot with some of the play equipment from the previous tenant, which happened to be a daycare center along the uh, left side and the rear portion of the building. Okay, so generally the context of the subject area around the project site is limited to office-like uses that are bordered by, uh, to the west by uh, the 101 freeway and by the Baylands to the east. The land uses in the area consist majority of offices and some other uses such as automobile dealerships and a church use. Here's some existing uh, photos of the site taken from the project plans. Here we could see uh, the building does have some rectangular forms with some slats and you can actually see here in this top middle photo uh, a view of one of the courts again open on one side on the elevation side and then uh, to the sky. Um, and then again, you can kind of see the rear area that was fenced off where there used to be play equipment. So um, moving on to the analysis that was conducted for the project, uh, staff thoroughly revoked in terms of zoning and we did found that it was far and lot coverage compliant. Though the two courts that are shown here and here um, would be filled in. They are exempted from floor area and uh, lot coverage via an exemption for amenity spaces, which is allowed for um, office type zoning. Uh, the ROLM zone is included in that. And here we can see the exchange of square feet where the uh, existing courtyards are 100 and, uh, 709 total square feet, but the total amenity spaces are about uh, 165. So there is a uh, kind of no net gain at all of, of square feet per the code. Here's uh, moving on to the proposed design. Again, we're looking, the project's looking to refresh the exterior of the building, um, which has rectangular forms. And then those narrow. <laughs> Was that me? I'm sorry. I heard a. That's me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think board members is unmuted. Got it. Got it. Um, Move, continuing on. Uh, so the, the rectangular forms of the building are broken up by those narrow accent tall windows that we saw in the slides before. Here we could see the materials that were utilized in the project, um, you know, maintaining some concrete plaster, uh, gonna propose clear glazing, uh, you know, metal aluminum panels for a rooftop screen, um, and then wood like uh, side cladding panels. Um, the palette in terms of color are dark to medium gray and black. Here we can see elevations of the project. Again, renderings of the proposed changes with a new landscaping shown. And in terms of the site changes, the majority of them come from the parking lot and circulation. Again, 
the uh, changes on the northmost driveway by relocating the center to the center of the site. So there was two driveways and then one got shifted to the center. Uh, the, all of the parking lot area was redesigned, included new planting strips where there weren't any, new landscaping. Um, in terms of the parking, the site is parking compliant. It does require 53 parking spaces. Uh, based on the code updates that double count accessible stalls, um, the parking is compliant in, in terms of what is proposed. Um, and also the site is including three long-term and two short-term bicycle parking spaces where there currently is none. So that does bring the site into compliance in terms of parking uh, full circle. The other thing here is uh, the site never had a formal loading area um, and based on the square footage of the site, it should, and the extensive changes to the parking lot did trigger a new loading space. So uh, the applicant did find an area to fit in a SU-30 vehicle, which is a typical delivery vehicle, FedEx, UPS, and so forth. Um, and staff did analyze that with uh, the Office of Transportation um, and did find that it met uh, our design standards um, and the circulation standards. In terms of exterior amenity spaces, the applicant is proposing uh, four new outdoor amenity spaces for visitors and employees, starting with the green entry garden area, outdoor meeting room, and uh, exterior dining area that is named the living room, and then there's a relaxation area. Uh, these changes do enhance the site and uh, would improve the conditions for employees and visitors. Here's a glimpse of what they are, the different four different areas on the exterior with extensive landscaping. Um, in terms of landscaping, there's 27 different plants proposed, 15 are native plants, 14 are low water use. Nearly all the proposed plants are suitable habitats for wildlife in terms of pollinators, uh, such as birds, bees, butterflies, etc. And then also, as I mentioned earlier, there are new planting strips uh, proposed in the parking lot, and that does allow for more trees to be planted, which the applicant is proposing, and does bring the site closer in compliance with the 50% uh, parking lot shading requirement, where the existing parking lot is uh, severely lacking in that. And then overall, there is less pave areas than the proposed, uh, or excuse me, than the existing conditions. So that is an improvement. Uh, in terms of key considerations um, for the ARB here, be the proposed changes to the site being compatible and consistent with the Bayland guidelines. As I mentioned earlier, they're dark and muted colors. Um, and then the proposed changes to the building and site meeting the ARB findings. As indicated in staff report, we do believe that the changes do meet the findings. And then in terms of recommendation, Staff recommends that the ARB take the following action, recommend approval of the proposed project to the Director of Planning and Development Services based on the findings and subjects to the conditions of approval. And that concludes staff's presentation. Thank you, Sam. Uh, next, we'll hear from the applicant. Uh, you have 10 minutes. Thank you, Chair Thompson. Let me do the share screen thing here. No worries. I will start the 10 minutes after you state and spell your name for the record. Right. So I'm going to be embarrassed here and I'm going to show my whole screen. <laughs> can you see that? Yes, we can. Okay, good. Uh, well, good morning, uh, Chair Thompson and members of the board. It's good to see everybody again. Uh, my name is Ken Hayes with Hayes Group Architects, and I'll be making the presentation on behalf of our client, uh, Vance Brown Builders. I'm joined this morning by um, consultants uh, SWA, our landscape architects, as well as uh, our civil structural engineer, Hobach and Lewin. And uh, Lauren Brown with Vance Brown Builders is, um, is also, uh, I think, on the call. So if there's any questions um, for him. I'd like to thank Mr. Gutierrez for helping us bring this application forward uh, to you this morning. Um, he's gone over the context pretty well, but I'm just going to reiterate. Um, so this is the project site. Uh, it's uh, between 101 
uh, and the Bayland, specifically on East Bay Shore um, and the Baylands. It's just a bit over an acre um, in size. Uh, it is zoned uh, RLL, RLLM and uh, has a number of overlays, Embarcadero, site design, as well as auto uh, dealership. It's also in the AE11 flood zone. Uh, this is an existing uh, shots of the existing building, um, one story, 1960s office building, about 16,000 square feet and no change to that area. The most recent use, and it sounds like a few of you were on the board back then, um, I was not involved with it, um, but it was a muster seed uh, daycare uh, center. Uh, views of the front, uh, you can see uh, the, the brick, uh, brick veneer, um, kind of uh, uh, limited landscaping that that's, is struggling for sure, um, just kind of tired and ready for a facelift. Um, back of the building, uh, here upper right hand corner, there's no windows facing uh, the Baylands. Um, it's uh, asphalt, pretty inhospitable. Uh, the north, can you see my pointer by the way, when I do that? You can, okay, great. So this is the north side of the building. There's an existing hedge running down this side that's okay. Um, and uh, you can see that hedge again here on the lower right-hand side. This is the, I guess, the, the uh, northeast corner of the building right here. This is one of the courtyards that will be, um, that will be filled in. So the goals for the project were to provide a new home for Vance Brown builders that conveys their values of sustainable, environmentally sensitive, lasting architecture while providing a safe and enjoyable working environment for their staff and customers. Um, we're going to reuse and dry flood proof the existing building, um, a 1960s panelized concrete building with new materials and daylighting. Reconfigure the parking lot uh, to provide uh, increased stall count and additional landscaping opportunities. Respond to the nature of the site and the, the great proximity, I think, to the Baylands environment and enhance the frontage along East Bay Shore and, and reintroduce some native uh, vegetation. In terms of site analysis, just real fast, all right, so 101 is over here. It's quite a noise source when you're out in front of the building, you do hear it. East Bay Shore Road um, uh, supports uh, both automobiles, but as well, uh, there's a bike path that runs along there and somewhere up here, it crosses over 101. So there's a way to get to the Baylands. In terms of solar orientation, this is the south, pretty hot side of the building. It's all asphalt. There's ingress and egress driveways, a shared one here on the south with this existing office building. And then this was an exit um, on the north of the site. Um, this north edge of the site here is where you'll find that, um, that hedge that we're trying to embellish. Um, it's a hedge of, of um, uh, some small trees and, um, and uh, shrubs, um, but we think it's, uh, it's worthy. And then uh, obviously there's views potentially of the Baylands uh, beyond, and that's what we're trying to indicate, uh, indicate there. The existing site plan um, here, you can see the uh, access shared driveway down here to East Bay Shore, the driveway up here, there was a pedestrian entrance uh, located here. The building was essentially surrounded by asphalt. I mean, you could circumnavigate the building in a car, um, which was, Seems kind of strange for being out in the Baylands, but um, on the south side here, we have trash and recycling off of the shared driveway as well as some parking. And on the north side, as I've said, this is where we have this hedge that we're gonna to try to embellish. And then you see the two courtyards that are going to be um, infilled here and here. The proposed site plan um, is uh, uh, reconfigured with access coming from East Bay Shore here. The shared driveway obviously has to say, so we're going to utilize that still to get back to this area of the site. Um, there are uh, permeable pavers out in front of the building to help reduce um, the amount of asphalt and kind of encourage percolation opportunities for, for water um, percolation. We're increasing the parking count, as Mr. Gutierrez said, to 53 parking spaces and uh, creating um, lots more landscaping opportunities for Coast Live Oak here along the street. We've got London Plain trees here and running down the side to help promote shading of the parking lot. Um, some of the, you know, the species of California fescue, gray rush, and iris, uh, iris um, could be quite lovely, I think, as the site gets developed. Uh, you can see that we've introduced new landscaping at the back as well as the south side of the building. And then this becomes this 
really cool garden outdoor patio space that has direct linkages now to the fitness center and the kitchen or break area um, for uh, Vance Brown's staff and, uh, and customers to utilize that. Um, so, you know, it becomes kind of a outdoor living, eating and uh, kind of a relaxation space, which uh, because the floor of the building is elevated above the ground currently, probably by two feet, there's actually views of the Baylands um, when you step out into this raised area because this is flush with the floor line and you step down to the existing parking uh, or the proposed parking now on the back of the building. So we thought that was a great uh, way to leverage kind of the location of the building um, out there on the Baylands. Uh, imagery, uh, really, you know, pretty simple, um, thinking coastal influence um, of uh, playing off grasslands with uh, vertical oriented siding, you know, sea ranch kind of like um, simple form. We're dealing with the existing block of the building, basically. Uh, we are looking at a frameless glass um, entry. Sorry, the whole image wasn't shown there. Frameless glass type entry with maybe metal cladding um, around it, but then the, uh, the, the Shoshugi Bond wood siding out in front. Um, we like the idea of going dark. The building will recede. It becomes background. It would be just beautiful to have the grasses and the flowers displayed against that backdrop. And then we think it's important to introduce some sophistication to sort of highlight Vance Brown's um, talents and expertise of building great architecture. And so uh, we're proposing windows that will have this metal cladding frame um, around them um, at the punch out openings. And that occurs uh, at all of the existing and proposed will, uh, windows uh, in the building. Uh, material palette, all right, so this changed a little bit from what, it's not changed from what you have as a physical board, all right? So the physical board reflects this. This is changed from the ARB set. Um, and what has changed is the Soshugiban material. It's still Soshugiban charred material, but we're gonna use Sugio, which is a charred Okoya. And the reason for the change from the Sverte, which is in the drawing set, is that the Sverte is not, um, uh, we're in the flood zone. And so it's not really a water resistant material approved for flood zone use. And so this material has a 50 year uh, warranty and a 25 year in ground warranty. Um, and the, the look is essentially uh, the same. Um, so we're proposing the Sushugi Bond charred Okoya instead, clear glazing, metal frames, um, all, stays, uh, all stays the same. I think we um, actually, the, the, the painted color um, is the twilight zone that may be slightly tweaked from what you had, but essentially it's, um, it's, it's the same uh, color for all intents and purpose. And then we have the board form concrete. And then just sort of some trying to do some comparative uh, uh, photographs and renderings. And so the existing is here on the left, obviously, we're removing the canopies and the brick and, and we would have this uh, beautiful um, backdrop building to the landscaping where you see the sedges and fescues um, along the front. We do have ramps on both sides because we have accessible parking on both sides of the building, um, but this will be the main uh, automobile uh, entry into the building. These would be uh, London plant or oak trees um, and uh, London plane trees uh, as well. The left-hand building is the northwest side, um, and so the right-hand drawing uh, is the northwest side um, as well, showing the, the new materials. We didn't show all the landscaping here, but they're shown later um, in the renderings that we, um, that we have. Uh, part of the flood proofing is to, in all the existing openings and any new openings, this sill line is 12 inches above the BFE. So all of the existing openings are being infilled with concrete walls um, and water stops in order to prevent flood waters to come into the building. Um, and uh, that sort of defines that limit um, of 12, 12 inches above the BFE or the base flood elevation. That will be covered with metal panel as will above the window. So these read as vertical slot openings with that metal panel detail I showed you earlier running around them. Architect Hayes, just so you know, your 10 minutes there. are up. Um, but I'll, I'll let you. I'm, I'm just about, yeah, I'm just about there. Uh, just uh, uh, the back of the building. This is the south side of the building here on the left with the new landscaping and the London plane trees. 
And then this is the north east side of the building, which is where all the amenity spaces will be. If I were to turn and look to the left, you'd look out to the Baylands. And then this is from the front parking lot, looking down that amenity space. And then another shot of the front of the building with the new landscaping, uh, California native landscapings. These are all in your, um, your drawing set. And that's pretty much it. So thank you very much. Happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll hear from the public if there's any public comment. Chair Thompson, currently there are no raised hands. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, I guess I'll ask the board if there are any questions of the applicant. Go for it. We're going to move. Great. So this is a, um, a couple of questions about the um, the trees along uh, East Bay Shore. Uh -huh. So one, does the does the same easement um, that we've seen before on the um, on the old Ming's restaurant site apply to this site? Um, I I recall that there's a, a height limit for the trees. And then a related question is why are the southern live oaks being replaced with um, California live oaks? Is that a question for um, the apple for me, Alex? Yeah, or you have um, right S S W A. I'm happy. Yeah, so I can introduce Dan Affleck to address the southern um, live oak um, uh, trees removal. Um, Dan, are you uh, able to address that comment as I, well as the uh, yeah. easement? The, the easement comment, I'm, I, I'm not familiar with the easement further down the street, but um, in terms of the, um, you know, we obviously we moved the driveway. Um, so we had to sort of, uh, there were some trees that we had to sort of replace. Some of them were not looking so healthy. So we thought it would be better idea to replace them with um, a native oak. The California live oak was, was the, the kind of intention just to sort of be consistent with uh, keeping this it's a uh, ecologically sensitive area we want to keep it sort of within the native palette so that was the, the idea there with, with the choice of the uh, california live oak great sam do you have any um idea about the the easements and the height restrictions for the trees because there was a major issue on the um on the main site for all three proposals mm -hmm. um been approved on that site yeah, yeah, the Ming site is, I think, about a mile up the road towards Embarcadero. Um, here, uh, I do see in our, um, you know, city data that there are some, you know, utility easements and whatnot in that run along the front of the property, if you will, along East Bay Shore. But in terms of the uh, limits that were applied to Ming's being applied here, I don't believe that they apply here because when utilities and public works engineering and other departments reviewed it, it, it was not an issue um, in terms of that. And, and we jointly reviewed that with urban forestry as well. And um, it, it did not come up as, a, as an issue here. Okay, great. Thank you very much. I have a question for Ken. Yes. Go ahead, board member Hirsch. Um, could you point out where the board form concrete is on the front of the building? I've kind of missed this uh, yes. location. Right here. So it will it will establish the edge of the ramps. Okay, fine. Right here on both sides. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So this goes away. Yes. So so that's another kind of question. I noticed the demolition drawings. Uh, you're you're completely removing the ramp and reconstructing it. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Just a quick follow up on that. Is that the only location where the board form concrete occurs? It it's it's on both sides, um, Chair Thompson, because the, there's a ramp on each side. So yeah, so it occurs on either side of the um, either side of the entry. Uh, you don't see it here because there's a hedge in front of it or there's the grasses in front of it, but it would be on both sides there and there. I don't think there's another view. Well, 
Yeah, it, it's right behind here. Okay. <laughs> We're getting a lot of mileage out of that. Um, are there any other questions? Yes, I have a question for staff, please, Osma. Go ahead, board member. Um, Sam, could you please explain the, the city requirement regarding the loading zone and then explain how they're meeting that requirement on this property, please? Sure. So uh, based on our uh, loading, uh, parking and loading requirements in the municipal code, um, different uses are allocated different requirements for parking and loading zones, as well as bicycle parking. So because the proposed use here would be a general business office, we'd look at the municipal code um, for that land use. And given the size of the building, it does require one loading space. And the typical loading space is a rather large loading space in the municipal code. It's actually uh, likened to an 18 wheeler with a, with a trailer, a tractor trailer, um, which makes sense if, I guess, if you're a grocery store or some large manufacturer warehousing, but not a general business office, uh, I, I would not be able to feasibly understand when that would regularly <laughs> deliver goods to the site here, other than uh, perhaps construction goods um, type thing, uh, but not during normal operation. So there is an allowance in the municipal code uh, via a director's adjustment to modify the size of the loading area and uh, the appropriate size would be a, a delivery vehicle known as an SU-30 vehicle, which is approximately the size of the standard UPS, FedEx, uh, or Amazon trucks that you see um, daily now since the pandemic started. Uh, so in, in via that director's adjustment, um, that's what we looked at applying to the site because there was enough site changes. I mean, the whole parking lot's being reconfigured. And since the existing site didn't have the required loading space, then this is what triggered the requirements. And we did find a, a solution for that. And again, uh, per our understanding of the circulation for that vehicle and the proposed circulation on the uh, site plan, it, it was found to be compliant. Uh, thank you, Sam. But if you could explain to me what, aside from just the size of the loading zone, is there a requirement for how it's configured or accessible? And again, where, where is that loading zone on the site right now? How are they proposing that? So the loading zone would be located um, right in, yes, Ken, if you could yeah, so highlight truck, that area. Yeah, if I may. Yeah, so the uh, uh, Chair Balte, or I'm sorry, a uh, member the, the vehicle would enter down here at the shared driveway, turn into the site this way, and temporarily park here um, for any you know packages that needed to come in and then exit the center driveway. So they'd need to back here and then exit the center driveway. Um, we felt like that was a suitable location. The, the asphalt paving there kind of does double duty um, for us um, as opposed to trying to create yet another Originally, we had something up here that um, allowed a truck to get in there, but that was just, it just didn't make any sense. Um, this is much better circulation once we reconfigured this driveway throat. So it, it's right here. So, so essentially the loading zone is in the drive aisle. And Sam, that's something that's permitted by the code? No. Uh, yeah, well, in the, with the director's adjustment to uh, locate that, I mean, it, it is an office use. Um, there wouldn't be frequent exits and visiting and so forth. Yeah, so thank it you, Board sense. Member Balte, for bringing that to our attention. Um, the We do not normally allow the loading spaces to be in a drive aisle like that. Um, they normally are more of a parking space um, of sorts. And so um, I think for this particular one, instead of saying that we're reducing the size, um, the director would need to say that the loading space um, really isn't uh, available. Um, however, we know in reality that a loading, a truck, you know, a, a sort of a delivery truck could park in front of the front door there and uh, make a successful delivery without blocking um, other parked cars. So I think the, the director would still see that um, as a reasonable adjustment to the loading space requirement. Okay, thank you, Steph. One other question, Osma. 
Um, to the architect, please. Is the back of the building being painted the dark brown color now? The proposed design? Yes, it is. And the mechanical screens up on top at the back, there's two small screens. Are those being enlarged in any way? Uh, the roof screen is actually being um, uh, relocated uh, to about this point um, in the building. Right now, the roof screen, I believe, comes out to here and it wraps like that. Right. And wraps down here. And so that is being relocated to, you know, here or, or here. And then it has the return walls um, on both sides. So is there anything being added on top of the building at the back side of the building that would be visible from the Baylands? Uh, we're not adding anything higher than what's there right now. So there's a roof screen there now that would be reclad, yes. And then we're relocating the front edge. You know, nothing along this wall here that remains and it just gets new finish. And the refinish is that darker color, correct? Correct. Thank you very much. No other questions, Dosma. Just a quick clarification. I heard board member Bolte say dark brown and my materials board is showing a dark gray. Can you clarify what that color is? This, this is the color here. The Benjamin more, yeah. Twilight. It's a concrete, it'd be the concrete, the paint that goes on the, the concrete frame as well as the back of the building. So there is no shashugi bond on the back of the building. There's okay. no, there's no, the brick veneer is coming off on the front, which allows us to get our, our rain screen um, weather barrier and then the shashugi bond cladding then will be in those areas that are formerly occupied by the brick. Um, and then the, the frame, let me. Yeah, so the brick comes off and, and that becomes the shashugi bond. You, we don't have that brick at the back of the building. So at the back of the building, we're just doing the, um, the paint color. Sorry, right, I just wanted to clarify that it wasn't a brown, that it's a. Uh sort of dark gray black color yeah actually let me show you what happens if i just one second i i because i ran out of time i didn't go here this is brand new on the left um shoshugi bon okoya um and then this is after um a year and a half on the right so it it, it begins to weather and it, it's warranted for 50 years so that kind of gives you can you see that? I, I, the, all of your pictures are over the top of it on my screen. There we go. So it'll start off like the picture on the left, and then after, after a period of time, it'll age. And so you read more um, of the wood grain, it becomes yeah. a little more gray. Okay. Uh, if I may, Chair Osma, I just wanted to follow up on that slide, that question of the yeah. uh, material there. Okay. And I, I just wanted to hear from the applicant briefly on the choice of this material and uh, familiarity with it or, you know, selection based on other uh, precedents. So have not used it before. Um, uh, we've, we have specified it on um, a couple other projects that are not yet, uh, not yet built, um, but we wanted a material that um, was, that, that was warm, that would, uh, um, in my opinion, feel coastal. You know, when you when you think about you know old piers and um, structures um, on uh, um, you know on the the baylands or near bodies of water, they they tend to um, be you know darker um, darker wood. Um, I see it as something that would age gracefully and be able to survive in the um, in the flood zone. And I see it as a background building, as opposed to a, a lighter color that sort of stands out. I think the, 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 the dark color will make the building recede. And I think that's what needs to happen kind of, um, you know, in that context. Um, so, uh, you know, I mean, uh, some of the first imagery we thought about was Sea Ranch, right? But, you know, obviously we don't have some of the, you know, the nice forms at, at Sea Ranch, but the materiality um, was something that we felt uh, could make sense out there um, in the Baylands. So that's why we chose the vertical siding and uh, the obviously the native uh, the native planting. Did that answer your question? Is that enough? Board member Lee, I didn't. I, I have a couple of questions. I just want to make sure board member Lee's. Oh, okay, fine. Yes, thank you. Thank you for that response. 
You're welcome. Uh, go ahead, Board Member Hirsch. Um, I, uh, you haven't uh, shown us in the set anything about the uh, graphics, the uh, signage, and I know that some of this would come later, but uh, certainly it could be uh, a very important uh, to the review of the whole project here. And in particular, you know, I can understand your point of view about uh, background building, but uh, could you uh, tell us a little something about the signage, uh, if you have anything in mind yet, or if you're going to bring it back, or how's, how's that going to be done? And then secondly is the paving issues where they are common to the neighboring building. Uh, you show, um, I think, uh, removing paving, scraping the paving off in these areas and just how is it able that you're going to be able to do this where you get parking to the back where half of, it seems like almost half the driveway is going to be repaved or why don't you describe how you'll handle that issue of the common common paving as part of the circulation? All right, uh, first uh, question regarding the uh, signage. Um, we, haven't, uh, we haven't proposed a sign uh, in this application. Um, once Vance Brown uh, builders uh, knows what they want to do, um, they would come forward with that application and that might be in concert with their um, with their interior uh, package. Currently, there's a monument sign out in front, and so we've we've removed that for now. But I don't know what their plans are for um, coming back with signage. I imagine that it would be um, fairly sophisticated and uh, um, you know and minimal. Uh, I could also see a sign on the uh, you know, maybe in stainless steel or something on the uh, Akoya. Um, Shoshigi bond up near the door um, as well, but uh, I don't. I don't necessarily think that that they're going to have a big broadcasting sign. Um, if Lauren wants to add anything to that, Lauren Brown is um, also on this uh, Zoom call. Lauren, is there anything that you'd want to add to that? Uh, we're currently at thirty one ninety seven Park, and we have um, four numbers on our building that are about six inches high. And then out at the street, we've got a little plaque that's about one foot by 15 inches that says Vance Brown Builders on it. So we're pretty understated in the way we um, identify ourselves and we'll probably be consistent with that. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, board member Hirsch um, on the parking. So there's, a, there's a, a mutually beneficial easement here on the south side where it says shared driveway um, that uh, both uh, the adjacent property and this property um, enjoy the use of. Um, and so uh, the parking on our side of the property obviously would get um, you know, either new asphalt uh, where we need it or um, a slurry coat uh, if, that, you know, if that works as well. Um, obviously in front here, we're doing the, um, the, the permeable type pavers um, I'm not sure. I don't, I, I'm not sure. I see the problem that you're concerned about with uh, uh, if we were to come in here and remove the paving on our side, that would still allow the adjacent property owner to enjoy their access to get to their parking. They have no parking on this side of the building. They basically come in and opposite where we turn left, they turn right into the parking that's in front of their building, and then there's no parking down the side, and then they have parking at the rear. So. Um, obviously, we would need to preserve their parking here. And if we want to have a consistent look between the new parking, I'm sorry, the new paving and the shared driveway, once we finished any kind of demolition and improvement work on our side of the property line, very simple to do a slurry coat over a weekend uh, while the building next door was, uh, was not occupied. They also have another way in and out of their site, which is not shown here. But um, you know, there's a there's a driveway entrance here, the shared driveway on the north side, and on the south side, there's an exit or entrance out to East Bay Shore. So they have a way in and out if this had to be temporarily closed. Okay. Okay. Are there any more questions of the applicant or staff? <clears throat> I have a couple more follow up questions. Um, mm -hmm. Back to the material choice, um, 
uh, you kind of have mentioned Sea Ranch. Um, can you speak really briefly to, um, again, why uh, the choice for this particular finish versus like a Sea Ranch? Because you mentioned Sea Ranch that has kind of the sort of lighter, browner colors. Yeah. Can you speak to why you chose Shosujigan over that? Yeah, a um, couple of reasons. One is we, we sort of get that natural background color um, that is more recessive, you know, so as the darker the color, in my opinion, it's going to, the building um, will recede. Um, but we also wanted a material that um, was going to last. And to be honest with you, I've been disappointed um, in cedar siding and materials like that that require constant maintenance to get them looking good. And you look around town, you'll see a number of our projects that had cedar used on them that, um, you know, we felt like this was probably a better choice, especially out there with the salt breeze and on the, um, on the baylands. Um, certainly, you know, cedar siding, redwood siding um, has been used, but if left to, to weather, it does, um, it does darken. Uh, so we felt like this kind of got us to where we wanted to be, um, you know, from the get go. Plus it has a 50 year uh, warranty. Um, and it's also FSC, uh, you know, harvested and serv certified um, Akoya, which is essentially a pine um, that go undergoes a, um, a, a, a treatment solution treatment with vinegar and other material or, you know, a solution that changes the chemical composition, the cellular structure of the wood to make it more resistant. Um, and this is better in the you know, flood zone because not that the building's going to be flooded, um, but there's a chance. And, uh, and so we need to use a material that is that, that exhibits resistance. And so it's either redwood, cedar, or something that has been modified to show that it can um, you know, resist uh, um, subversion in water without damage um, over time. And so that was another reason. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess, uh, sorry, I'm noticing that the numbers in, in your presentation are different in terms of the material. Um, see, All out. Um, but that's, that's okay. Um, I actually think I got my answer to that question. We, we talked about that one. Um, and can I ask about the permeable pavers? Um, the choice um, in terms of area, um, why, why that location for the permeable paper versus another location? Yeah, I mean, we felt like that um, was the most, well, it is the most public side of the building and is able to, I mean, permeable pavers aren't, aren't inexpensive. Um, and and the, the subgrade preparation is a large part of that cost as well. But we felt like that was the public side, the public front, where it was easiest to communicate that message from Vance Brown. Um, that, that was it, really. Um, we felt like there was better impact there than somewhere else, and we really couldn't do any more. Now, unfortunately, we, you know, we, we weren't using them in the handicap spaces. But. Okay, that's, that's all right. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you. All right, I don't know if there are no more questions. Um, I think we can close that part of the, the hearing and we can move on to board member feedback. Should I stop share or should I keep these images up? Yeah. I'll just keep them. them. Yeah, it's nice to see them. Um, yes, I'll see who wants to go first. Part of me wants to hear from board member Lou first since he did some research on the material as well. I'd like to hear. Yes. Um, so thank you for, for your presentation, Ken. I think it's a, um, it's a handsome project. Um, thank you. I, uh, I mentioned that I reviewed the previous tenant on this, in this building. Um, and at the time, I think I, I was concerned about the um, ADA path of travel to the street, and they didn't really improve it. So I do like that you've made that improvement on the site. Um, on the on the previous um, project in the Baylands, I reviewed this, 
uh, the, air, the vicinity at night, and I noticed that the lighting generally in the area is terrible. Um, and I think the, your, the existing building has, um, you know, wall-mounted lighting that shines out horizontally. Um, so I greatly, um, I think you're greatly improving the, the quality of the lighting on the site. I think that's great. Um, and then I also noticed that there is uh, really very little parking lot shading on the existing site, and I think you've made um, some dramatic improvements there. So I think that that's all really good. Great. My, my reservation was the Shugi bomb, um, just because the sample at City Hall was so dark. Um, I did research the material because I've seen other applications of it where that show more grain. Um, I did mm -hmm. research did indicate though that the ones that are sort of pre-scraped to show more grain do require ongoing maintenance. So in a way, I think what you're proposing, um, although I think it's I think it's going to be kind of a shock to have such a dark building initially, I think that's probably in the spirit of Valen, it's probably the right way to go. That you know that that, that doesn't need um, ongoing maintenance. Um, I think my inclination is is to allow it is to to allow it um, because it's a one-story building. I think if it were a two-story building, I would say no because it's um, so dark uh, uh, relative to everything, all the other buildings and landscape around it. So, but I'm curious to see what my other board members have to say about that. Um, so that's where I'm at. I can, I'm thinking of recommending um, approval of the project today. So thank you. Thank you. Member Lou, um, who would like to go next? Would you like me to speak, Osma? Sure, go for it. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, nice to see your project, Ken. Um, I'll jump right to the materials because I think they're excellent. I think it's a wonderful, a wonderful choice of materials for a building in the Baylands. And I think uh, the wood siding especially is going to be fantastic in the way it ages. I think it's hard to represent on the screen or in simulations the, the tactile quality, the natural capacity of this material to, to please and to change over time, which to me is exactly what we should be doing around the Baylands. So I think it, it's, a, it's a wonderful selection of materials and uh, exemplary, in fact, for what we should do in the Baylands. Um, I, uh, in walking around the site at the back, I, I really don't see the view corridors, architect Hayes, that you speak about. And uh, I think that's good. I think it's important that all the buildings there just be screened as much as possible. There seems to be a pretty large row of oleanders, um, which, which screen almost all of the building except for the top three or four feet and the mechanical screens. So I think it's really important and, and it is what you're proposing to, to paint those a darker color to try to blend them in a little bit more. That will improve the situation, which I support. Um, I do caution staff that there is a landscaping hedge along the full length of the property now and I would be loath to see any of that get changed. Uh, to remove it to allow views out would also allow views in. And that's antithetical to our Bayland guidelines, I believe. I have two uh, more serious concerns about the project, though, relating to the front of it. Uh, one hinges on the trees, as Alex mentioned. Um, I suspect that you guys just haven't come across the PG&E easement requirements yet. That's not something Palo Alto is going to be aware of. This is a PG&E high tension line across the front of the property. But my understanding from the Mercedes-Benz project down the street was that this applied underneath that whole length of that line. And effectively, you're not allowed to plant trees that anything more than an ornamental tree. Uh, this is important, I think, because you have a series of oak trees there now that are almost positioned exactly like you would like them for your design. And to see you cut down perfectly good trees because they're perhaps a few feet off of what you'd like, and then find out from PG&E that you can't plant new ones would be a real mistake. Uh, to the owner, to Vance Brown, I'd say that's hardly uh, environmentally conscious to cut down oak trees that are in the middle of their life and look quite healthy to me, um, to replant new ones just a few feet away, um, and then risk not being able to have anything there. So I would encourage you strongly to both verify what your easement and legal requirements are, and then if there's any way to consider keeping the existing oaks 
I think it'd be a much better public statement, a much better design practice, might save you some money as well. Um, but to my eye, they're pretty healthy looking trees. For that matter, although I'm not an arborist, they, they look an awful lot like coast live oaks to me. Um, and I saw a number of other inconsistencies on the landscaping uh, labeling. Maybe it was the architectural plan labeling about which trees were oaks and whatnot. So I would, I would just revisit and check that. I believe those trees could be saved. My other concern is regarding the loading zone. Um, I've seen this before with staff, but I think it's a real mistake to call something a loading zone when it's not. We're just opening up Pandora's box for everybody who's required to have loading. When you allow the drive aisle to be the loading zone, um, you're just saying something that's not true. That's not a loading zone that will block traffic. When that UPS truck is parked there, the people parked in those spots can't get in and out. Nobody will be able to drive in and out of the parking lot. It will completely block the parking lot. And we all know that's true. Um, so I think you should either recommend that the director says we don't need a loading zone here, or they should create a real loading zone that does not interfere with the flow of traffic. I, I definitely support the reduced size of the loading zone. I think there's going to be numerous times a day, UPS or Amazon trucks, things like that coming in and out. But it seems to me it could be designed, and I think it should be designed such that those trucks can stop, make their 10 minute delivery, without interrupting the flow of traffic through the parking lot. Um, and most importantly, is not to establish the precedent that this sort of dry aisle loading zone is acceptable because I categorically think it's not. Um, those are my comments. Thank you very much. Well, I could pick up next, Osma. Thank you, go ahead, Board Member Hirsch. Um, just on that very issue, you know, uh, that, uh, Peter ends up with here. I, I don't think in this particular situation, it's unreasonable to have uh, that kind of a loading zone. <clears throat> um, and uh, my, my reasoning is that, you know, you see, it's a matter of the kind of usage here. It seems to me it's, this is, whatever happens, it's going to be a pretty quick in and out situation where something is simply dropped off and then the, the, the vehicle continues quickly out of the lot. Um, and, and there seems to be enough room in the front of the building to allow a uh, passage uh, um, around uh, the vehicle because it's very visible. Um, so so I'm, I personally am not opposed to this idea that uh, these things should change based on the kind of usage of a building, and it's a smaller office space, it's one story, so the delivery would be direct into the front. I'm looking at the plan and wondering where the front desk is, but I see it there. Okay, so something, somebody comes in and delivers, and I'm assuming there's somebody up front <clears throat> to take the package, and then the, then the uh, vehicle leaves. And uh, to back up a little bit to get back out of the center drive seems like it's going to be reasonable. So I think an exception to the to the normal kind of designated spot is reasonable here. <clears throat> and because it only affects people who are likely to be going to, because their visitors are likely to go to meetings in the front of the building and have access to the ramp easily around both sides of the front steps. So, so an exception is, to me, a reasonable idea. Um, <clears throat> the whole issue of, yes, the Akoya and the uh, uh, feeling of the Baylands, and one would wish that this could be a kind of a standard for the rest of the uh, these commercial buildings that are sort of stuck into this area here. It has a really a sophisticated look to it and becomes very much of a background look as described. And uh, I, think, I think there's a lot of uh, good thinking going on in that. It, in a way, I, I almost feel it was almost too buttoned up and neat. <laughs> and I was hoping for a little bit more color and I might suggest to Vance Brown that I think their, their signage uh, is very colorful <clears throat> and uh, it would be interesting to see 
a bit of that color added to the somewhere in the front of the building, even if the one out in the building or on the built <clears throat> building is more sophisticated that somehow coming down the road and seeing the Vance Brown uh, graphics that I've seen around are, it would be an enjoyable kind of idea to, because it's, it's fun and it's colorful. And this building kind of, except for the greenery, which is a wonderful thing here, really takes and makes, uh, by squeezing in as many trees as you can, and uh, it changes the whole nature of this building to have that much nature uh, added to the project. Um, personally, I, I think it's a sort of a shame that, uh, you know, looking out at the Baylands can't be more for the use of uh, the people who use the building, that uh, the area which you have in the back there, I, I would like to see that somehow open to exactly, open to the, uh, open to the Baylands so that, you know, you don't really show exactly how that will be seen, but it would be really wonderful if that was. And frankly, I was even thinking, gee whiz, you can't, you have a stairway up to the roof and you really could almost get up there and look out and see the Baylands and have a, be a part of it that way. It's a, to close off that, uh, that experience is, is unfortunate, uh, that uh, it's a both way experience. And we are so careful to make sure that the buildings that are placed near the Baylands don't disturb those people who are in the Baylands, but there's the equal idea that you, you want to be a part of it a bit from these buildings and the more they can sort of participate in it, it in some way I think is a useful uh, exchange between the two different viewpoints here. Um, the, uh, there isn't very much detailing on the railing, but I know uh, Ken Hayes' abilities on uh, those kind of detail things. And I would expect that uh, the kind of railing around the new ramp will be of high quality. And I look forward to seeing it and we'll actually can go along with Alex's suggestion that that uh, it would probably be approvable today. And I would take it on good faith of Ken Hayes's capabilities to be able to do a quality railing design. Uh, and um, let me just make sure <coughs> I haven't missed anything. I'm sorry, you know, I'm sort of really sort of, uh, I think it's a bit unfortunate that I'm, the shared driveway couldn't be dealt with, not just with a topping or whatever, you know, that somehow or other there's a conflict there between the uses and the ownership uh, that ought to be somehow able to be dealt with so that you could really improve that uh, and make sure that improvement of the shared driveway at, uh, surface doesn't look kind of un unattractive relative to all of the new work that's happening. <laughs> um, and in terms of the trees and the easement, uh, you know, I think it's a, a sort of a, a good idea and, and trust in the uh, landscaper to understand that more is better uh, and that this gives you the freedom to put the mass of trees in front that you want because it's a brand new project and it deserves to get brand new trees. Uh, even if you are taking a little liberty in so doing, but I think it's an appropriate way to kind of mass the trees in the front and let the nature become a stronger element here. Uh, and it's done as best you can by carefully considering all the parking spaces and the spaces where you can use trees, um, I, I think that's, that's really important to a building like this, this commercial building, and it's definitely missing elsewhere. And hopefully again, it'll be an indication as uh, perhaps some of the other buildings are renovated on this, in this grouping and along the street here to have this similar kind of uh, sensitivity to the perimeter um, plantings. 
I really like the idea of how you use the side and how it becomes protected from the front and uh, how it becomes a part of the use of the space. Uh, um, it's just uh, nice to be able to use even the smallest of spaces like that so that uh, it creates a more casual, friendly atmosphere for the staff. And so planning inside and out is a good idea so that it's next to the kitchen. You know, these things are what make uh, buildings like this enjoyable to work in. And I think that's a very sensible idea. Uh, and the way it transitions to its own kind of um, think space or dream space or whatever you call it, the back idea, socializing space uh, that is a little different in texture and the rest is a good transition and uh, a right way to think about using spaces like that. Even though it's right next to parking, it, it's an amenity that is well thought out and I appreciate that. So these are my comments. Uh, I hope that Alex has looked at the lighting carefully because that is a very important piece uh, for the site because of kind of the nighttime in the and the fact that it's almost a kind of gets isolated down there. And I would imagine there'll be some people working late. So safety and those issues are kind of important here. So a nice project, very sophisticated project with a lot of thought in it. Thank you. Thank you, board member Hirsch. Um, Vice Chair Lee. I want to thank um, our planner, Sam, and uh, thank the applicant for the for the submittal and uh, it's a pleasure to review. Um, thank you fellow colleagues on the board for your comments. I, I don't have a lot to offer here that is new. I, I can say confidently I'm, I'm, I can approve this project today for the findings uh, presented in staff report. And, um, and I do think this, uh, this presentation was exemplary in terms of its completeness. And um, I have faith that the landscape um, and the trees and all of those issues will be resolved working with staff on the applicant side. I, I also do think that the loading uh, discussion is it's good that we spent some time there. I, when I was on the site, there was a food truck. There was a there was a truck that was going around and and it did block me off for um, a short period of time. Um, I don't see an issue given the the scale of the site and the occupancy and the use here. Um, and then overall, I, I do want to just uh, commend uh, this project for providing uh, the amenity to the users. I am not one for taking away courtyards if they exist on a building uh, such as this. However, um, thankfully, there are those uh, four spaces um, that I think will be used and um, provide uh, just terrific addition to this property. Um, my only hesitation previously after not hearing the presentation overall and the discussion today was the material uh, choice. And I, at first when I, and this really shows how limited we are in our review, looking at drawings and looking on screen. And, um, but my concern was that there was so much area, even in a single, uh, you know, one story building, and it was just going to be black if I if I if I squinted. But um, thank goodness um, we were able to see that last slide in terms of the aging of that material and understand that um, there is a, a you know confirmation of fifty years. Um, and and I do think the depth of the grain um, in that treated pine uh, will and just it's it's change over time its transformation. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do this uh, project well. And so um, I believe that's all my comments. And I'll hand it to you, Chair Osmo. Thanks. Sorry, I'm just scribbling more notes. Um, okay. Um, okay, I'll be really, I'll try to be as brief as I can. Um, I shared a similar reservation um, when I looked at the on the materials when I looked at the, the um, PDF package, the renderings make the building look like a very dark brown, um, which I was all up for. I think the the sea ranch vibes came through the PDF package because of the way the building was visualized. 
And once I went to the site, um, it's true, I noticed all the adjacent buildings are a lot lighter. I was like, okay, well, this is gonna be dark. Initially, I thought it was gonna be dark brown. I was like, okay, it's gonna be dark, but at least it'll kind of be in the brown palette. And then I went to the materials board in the city and it's just this like pitch black. Like I didn't even know there was a material there for a second because I got there and there's an overhang. And so the whole thing was already in shadow. Um, so I, I had a huge concern about the material being so dark. And honestly, I can't say that I share my board members uh, sort of change of heart necessarily um, after seeing the presentation. I have seen Sho Sujiban um, applied on a one-story building after a good amount of time and it looks it looks really rough. Um, at least that one application I saw was really rough. Um, and I don't want to say that, you know, that one experience is going to dictate what this ends up looking like after 20 years. Um, but we have made other comments for other buildings in this area where black is not appropriate in this area. Um, and so I have a concern about that. I, I do love the material as an idea, like it's, I love that it's sustainably harvested. I love that, you know, it has these properties uh, in terms of uh, fire protection, uh, but I have reservations and I don't know if there's a way to, I don't know if there are other, in the pictures looking at Shosujivan, there's some that kind of have a browner tone and there's some that kind of have like a blue tone. And I don't know if there's a way to navigate that and that maybe we can kind of I might be more okay with a Shosuji bond that has more of like a browner tone, but I don't even know if that's even a thing. Um, so I, I have reservations about the material. Um, I think if we do move forward to approving this project, I would want that to go to subcommittee because I, I think there's a lot to analyze there and make sure that's right. Um, so, so that's my concern about the material. I also have concern about the coating of the concrete side also being really, really dark. Um, a similar thing, and that's that doesn't have the texture. Obviously, that's not facing the front side, but um, I just have concerns about that. Um, and then in terms of the trees, um, I think that's a big thing. Um, we can hear from staff about the PG&E easement, um, but I'm I'm very convinced with what board member Balte said that if you have healthy trees in that area um, and you have the easement there, I, I would not be in support of removing them. And similarly with the loading issue, um, I think that's something that needs to be revisited. Um, I I also have concerns about loading. So if we do, otherwise, you know, the, the building's really great. And I do want to commend uh, the applicant and architect. This presentation was really great. And I really appreciated the clarity. Um, it gave us a lot of insight into the project. So I really, really, really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, but if we, if we do move forward to approving this, I would like the, the Shosujiban, the trees, and the loading to go to subcommittee. Um, so that's where I'm at. Um, Jody, can you shed some light on the PG&E easement issue? Yes, so thank you. Um, I think in 99.9% .9 of our projects, uh, we do not deal with PG&E. Uh, we have our own city-run utility. And so um, Sam has done a wonderful job of coordinating with all of our different city departments. Uh, but this one, we do also need to coordinate with PG&E. So I think your all of the board members' sentiments are correct. Um, once we probably check with PG&E, it is likely that they will tell us it needs to be ornamental type trees. Um, so we will we will do that double check um, to ensure. Uh, but I think that's all correct. And I think the loading space. Um, I already talked about that. Uh, the director should do a full adjustment, uh, but I think there's been some conversation about, you know, the proposed location could still be a, a reasonable location for drop-offs. And I just wanted to bring up lighting to, um, you know, there definitely is some lighting added to the site, which I think will be good in the early evenings, uh, but we will make sure that there's a code requirement that in the later evening, 
the lighting is reduced to security levels uh, because we want to make sure that we ensure the quality of the bay lambs. Thank you. Is there any more discussion from the board after hearing everybody's initial thoughts? Sure, Osma, I'll just offer that um, what I heard from the board was largely, I thought from uh, most members, um, very positive comments. And, you know, just given that uh, we've heard from, uh, you know, Jody now that the city will be doing their utmost work with the applicant moving forward as, you know, but taking this proposed forward, um, and we'll be crossing their T's and working with all the authorities that are needed. I just wonder if I might, you know, just move to approve the project as um, proposed and see if somebody might want a second and a vote and then have more discussion after that. Um, just a clarification, did you move or were you talking about moving? Oh, oh I'll just move that we approve the project as proposed. Is there a second? I would second it. Um, may I offer a friendly amendment? Um, wherein we revisit uh, the tree issue and the material choice. Um, and I'll just say those two things uh, as subcommittee. Or and loading, sorry. Trees, material choice, and loading in a subcommittee. I guess that, you know, the question is how to revisit. Um, it sounded like from on, on from the city side that there would be you know discussions based on the proposed. So I'm not sure if if um, there's a need to amend uh, in that way. Um, an example might be like if the city does come back and the trees, the tree design that we see here has to change, that we would get to see that as part of the subcommittee. Um, board member Hirsch and others, is there any discussion related to that? I, I'm inclined just to move forward if we could, you know, vote first on, on. Uh, you know, just moving to approve as presented to see if there's board majority support there. Uh, I'd speak to you to that. I think that it, uh, you know, there's a, a issues that are significant that we say should come back to committee. Uh, and then we have to consider at this point whether there really are any issues that way. Um, you know, I, I look at the project as a very, you sort of typically of this architect, I think they give us uh, enough of everything to make a decision here. Uh, and I find that satisfaction in just that very point, so that the decision about the kind of the trees that will be replaced, should that be necessary, can be handled somehow without our input. <clears throat> because I think it's pretty clear what the intention is here. So <clears throat> that's to say that I agree with Grace that the project is, is approvable at this time. Would say sure. we don't I need to go to committee. Your, your comments, Board Member Hirsch and you know, Chair Osma, after hearing uh, Board Member Hirsch and also thinking a bit further, I'm not sure what I could offer more in a second hearing discussion or subcommittee. Um, so I, if I may, I'll just proceed with the motion as originally presented. It looks so, like Jody's raising her hand. Yeah, <laughs> if I may, um, what I'm hearing is that um, if pg e requires ornamental trees, then the seven trees that are proposed in the front here, it would be okay to do a smaller size. Um, that's how staff would interpret that. Can I, can I speak to that motion, please, Osma? Sure. Um, I'd like to try to convince my colleague that this is not a good motion to vote for. Um, I think Jody just put her finger on the button. Uh, if pg e requires that you have ornamental type trees, we're going to see seven Western red buds along the front of this property. A very similar situation to what we saw on, on, uh, on the Mercedes-Benz deal. And I think that would be a distinct 
step down from what you have now, which is a series of beautiful oak trees along the frontage of this property. So for us to just pass the buck on, on deciding on a real landscaping plan for the front because we don't have all the information seems to me irresponsible. And I cannot support that. I think it's likely that otherwise we will have small ornamental trees along the street that will not complement this design. So I cannot support that motion. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak to the motion? Yeah, I can't. I can't support the motion either. Um, if the tree, if the tree is, is an issue, if the trees are an issue, um, and we're limited to like 15 foot high trees, um, then I'm actually going to expect um, a completely different treatment of the land in the front. So I'm saying like probably something more like um, mounds with uh, varying heights of bunch grasses, um, something with a lot of texture um, that will fit in with the baylands. And so I, I don't just want um, the landscape architect to make a quick substitution and then and, and get approval. So I can't support the motion. And I would have to agree with board, what board member Balti and board member Lou are saying as well. Um, would you like to move forward, Grace? Sounds like maybe someone else would like to make an alternate motion then, and I can take mine off since we don't have the votes. Okay. Um, I'll move that we um, approve the project um, subject to the conditions in the report with the, with the uh, following items to be revisited in a subcommittee. Um, one of those items are the tree design at the front um, of the building. Another is the to to change the um, to revisit the the loading space definition per the director of, of the planning adjustment. Um, and the last item would be to. Um, request that the architect consider um, a warmer, consider a warmer material for the siding as part of the subcommittee. Is there a second? I could second that, Osma, if you modified the last, the last bit. Okay, how would you like me to move? I would like to have um, samples provided, physical samples of the exterior finishes um, with the intent of making sure they're not too dark, so being slightly lighter. The, the, wood, the wood treatment they're proposing has an enormous variety of shades that you can select. And I, I think we all agree, we don't want a black building there. Um, I think when we see the real samples, it will be clear that it, it's actually very appropriate, but it's very legitimate to want to see those samples to make sure. The same thing with the color of the paint on the back of the building, it shouldn't be too dark. So if you changed your, your motion to say that uh, the architect provided samples and considered uh, not having the building look too dark for subcommittee approval, I could support that. I would agree with those changes. I will amend my motion to include those. Then I second the motion. Would anybody like to speak to the motion before we vote? Uh, I'd like to be clear regarding the loading zone. I'm not opposed to the idea of trucks being allowed to pull up in front. I want to be clear that we're not establishing a precedent that drive aisles are loading zones. And that's what I'm hoping staff can really clarify. What, what exception is being granted? So we're not necessarily asking them to redesign the whole project with a real truck parking place as much as we are just to be really clear what we're doing. I would concur with that as well. Any other thoughts before we go to vote? The only discussion I, I just want to add is what I understood is the uh, planning staff had, had described it as, as an exception to uh, the rule of having a loading zone. And in no way is this a granting of dry vials as serving as loading zones, but given the specific situation there, they were going to grant it for it's a case by case. Well, so, that, that, I, that's my I agree with your sentiment, Grace. What I read in the report was that they were granting a, an exception to the size of the loading zone, and they made no mention of the configuration. 
and I think configuration is a big part of the issue here. Okay, that's all I had to add. So uh, to, to speak to that, uh, Peter, then what are you saying that uh, you're, you're really not in favor of providing another specific loading zone? You'll accept the concept of having the loading where it is shown, but you need you need some authorization that says that this is officially a, an acceptable loading zone for this building or or should we leave it out of the issue and just since you seem to accept the location at this point now you're now changing. well what i'm what i'm saying david is that the city council's put put in place a law requiring loading zones requiring us to consider them in this case they're saying they don't need the full extent of the loading zone required by code for mitigating circumstances on the building. I'm asking that staff really properly document what those circumstances are and what's being done so that the record is clear and that they've really considered it. And I think at that level, whether the loading zone is really working or not, I'm perfectly happy to let staff make that determination. Okay, then should we leave it off our motion? Well, no, I think it, what's presented to us is not adequate. What they're saying is that dry vial is a loading zone. That's what I read in the application. That's what I'm objecting to. Yeah, staff would agree with board member Balte that just uh, some paperwork cleanup needs to happen so that we create the right precedence. So it's not to be brought back to pre committee or we will see it at some point. Is that part of what will happen? It, 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 it's just that our approval will be cleaned up. Okay. as far as how I, we talk about the loading space. I could agree with that then too. Yeah, and I want the committee to see that though. I think it's at this point important to verify that it's done in a way that we feel comfortable with. Okay, convinced. Yeah. Okay, any other thoughts before we vote? Okay, uh, Vin, can we do a vote? Board member Volte? Yes. Board member Hirsch? Yes. <clears throat> Vice Chair Lee? I'll vote nay. Um, board Member Liu? Yes. Uh, Chair Thompson? Yes. Okay, the motion carries 4-1. Thanks. Um, usually we, sometimes I forget to do this, but I remember today is um, we asked uh, the board member that voted nay if they would like to speak to their nay. Well, thank you for that opportunity, uh, Chair Osma. I just, you know, I, I was convinced that the, the darker uh, kind of colors and would be fine in this situation and the choice of material and the, the idea that it would recede in this landscape um, was very positive in my mind. And so in that case, and then I was confused by this whole loading discussion. I just don't see the need for that. But, um, and, and thank you for that opportunity. Thank you. Um, okay. Chair, if I may, do we want to go ahead and um, do the subcommittee who's going to be on the committee? Or we can do that later if you'd like. Um, That'd be the ad hoc. Sorry, the ad hoc. Committee. Thank you. We have to amend them. <laughs> Our um, new language. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, Vice Chair Lee, would you like to be on the ad hoc committee to look at the materials? Oh, I'll, I'll pass on that opportunity. Okay. I would like to be on that committee chair if, if you're seeing fit to appoint me. Yeah, that sounds great. I would also like to be on that committee. There you go. <laughs> All right. You got two. Walter Thompson. Thank you. That's a good idea. Um, all right. Well, we thank you so much to the applicant. Um, thank you. I enjoyed being with you this morning. Look forward to getting the project moved forward. Oh, it looks like Lauren has a question. So, you know, we went through um, careful consideration of all these sightings and we selected that dark siding. And I mean, it's something we want for our building. And I know you, you guys seem to want something else, but where, how do we get some weight in the decision of what gets picked? I mean, it's, it's our building. We're paying for it. We're living there. <laughs> Well, we own the building. I mean, we ought to have a say in what our building looks like. I don't want you guys, I really don't want you guys designing our building for us. I mean, I respect your opinions and things like that, but 
I don't want the ultimate choice to be you come down and tell me I can't, I got to have a, a white bill instead of a, a dark building. So I think Mr. Brown, there is going to be a subcommittee meeting. And so you would have a chance uh, to make your case at that subcommittee meeting uh, with other samples of, of other colors that may be acceptable to you as well. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, okay. Subcommittee hearing would be, I'm sorry. When do you think that would happen? Uh, you can talk to Sam and he'll set that up. It's, you know, it, it doesn't take that long to set up a subcommittee meeting. I'm afraid, Ken, it's going to take some time to get through to PG&E, however. <laughs> and I, I really stress to you, Ken, you're, you're going to have to deal with that. They're, uh, they're going to be on you about the trees, I can promise you. So the sooner the better that you find out what you're going to do. In that case, we, we might just leave the Southern Oak. Yeah. <laughs> Thumbs up. Okay, thank you. Um, so to, a, a bit of comment on that, just follow up. Uh, we, we did see that, didn't we, uh, in particular on the corner site, uh, and there was a demonstration of the trees that were acceptable. And I thought in the end, we didn't, we didn't disagree with what was shown to us at that uh, at close to the end of the first part, although the project never went ahead. Can, the can, site. I think this item is closed. We should. Um, I'm sorry. Speak. I think this this item we're not we're closing this item for now. So I think let's move on. I just wanted to know if there's any history of uh, discussion about those trees that were on the went on that other site in the end result. Can can Jody speak to that in some way? Yeah, I think the Mercedes project that's located on the corner. Um, they needed to do a lot more reconstruction and we had some, you know, concerns about the sidewalk and things. And so that's why the existing trees could not remain. Um, so we have a different situation here. Um, and yes, there were lots of tree discussions and, and various species that were acceptable and not. So we do have that information and we can um, hook the um, applicant up with that information. Good. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Okay, our next item is to approve the meeting minutes from September 2nd. I'll move that we approve the meeting minutes from October 2nd. September 2nd. Is there a second? Wait, I'll, I'll second. Okay, motion by Lee, seconded by Lou. Uh, can we get a vote? Board member Bolte? Yes. Board member Hirsch? Yes. Vice Chair Lee? Yes. Uh, board member Liu? Yes. Chair Thompson? Yes. Okay, the motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Um, our next item is to approve the meeting minutes from September 9th. I will make a motion that we approve the minutes for September 9th. There a second? I'll second that. Thanks. Can we get a vote? Board Member Balte? Yes. Board Member Hirsch? Yes. Vice Chair Lee? Yes. Board Member Lee, uh, Lou? Uh, yes. Chair Thompson? Yes. The motion carries 5 0. Okay. Thank you. Our next item is uh, board member questions, comments, or announcements. Um, we have the NVCAP item on there. Yes, so the city council met on September 20th and they selected um, option one, which was the, the, the one with the least amount of um, house, new housing units. Um, and that will be studied um, by staff, you know, they'll do like CEQA review that option. And the vote was six to one with um, council member McCormack voting no. 
Um, so that will um, that'll continue. And um, so you know, I'm going. I'm going to be off the board. Um, the committee is not necessarily meeting, um, but it is possible that the planning staff will um, convene convene the um, committee to meet. So, um, so you may or may not need to pick pick another um, board member uh, to sit in on those meetings. Oh. And that's all I thought on that one. Um, wait, so should we pick another board member to sit on those meetings? Or so we, we do have three board members, uh, board member Lou, board member Hirsch, and board member Balte, um, whose terms are coming up at the end of the year. Um, I believe board member Lou is the only one who's actually termed out um, because council has the new policy about um, you know, maximum number of, of terms in consecutive terms. So maybe he can wait one term and come back. <laughs> um, but, uh, oh no, don't say that. <laughs> um, but uh, so I can talk to management. Um, it is likely um, that we, I'll have to ask if we need another representative, but it is very possible. Does that mean we're maybe getting different board members next year, I guess, in January? Correct, correct. There, um, if, if board member uh, Hirsch and board member Balte want to continue, um, they would need to reapply and, and go through that process. Um, so I think maybe we should mention now too, is that this is the, um, that the applications are due very soon, October 19th, I think. Um, is the deadline, and it can be also it can be submitted um, online to the city. Um, and I would just say that I have been reaching out to um, architects as well as one of the previous um, ARB members has been helping me. Um, there's not there's not a lot of interest, um, so um, but we're going to continue to try to find somebody. Yes, thank you for that. I just want to, you know, call out and voice our sincere appreciation to board member Lou for serving both on the Ventura committee, that group for this past year, I believe, or longer. And, um, and also thank Alex for trying to help recruit um, someone who's excited about ARB. Uh, thank you for that. And um, I don't know how we want to acknowledge Alex's service. I mean, it, it, it is, um, unfortunate that these rules apply. Um, and so I just wanted to bring that up. I feel similarly, Vice Chair Lee. I feel like it's too bad that we weren't able to get together before January, otherwise I would have really wanted to throw you a party, Alex. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, please send me your ideas. Um, we have a few of our own, but yes, thank you. Definitely want to celebrate uh, board member Lou for his long service on the board. I want to express my sentiments too about this. <laughs> It'll be a big loss. I think I should, that sums it up in a way. <clears throat> anyway, well, thank you guys. Um, I think it's really important that there's always, you know, that there's always new people coming on the board. I think it's always really good to have a mix of um, new and old board members. So, um, uh, I think the board, the board actually works best that way. So, um, yeah, so it's time. Yes, Alex, okay. I'm sorry to see you go. Um, I'm on the fence if I will stick around a third term or not myself, but um, the work you've done has been phenomenal. It's been fantastic to have you as a colleague. So thank you. Very inspiring. Osma, could I ask, I don't know if it's appropriate or not, but you presented the objective standards to city council just this week. Could you give us a recap of how that went? Sure. Yeah, I was, I was planning. Are you allowed to put that on the discussion right now? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not a discussion. It's just an announcement. An announcement. Yes. Um, correct. Yes. So uh, on Monday, um, the city council review had their first hearing on the objective standards. Uh, Jean did a good presentation. Um, I recapped 
as best I could our discussions on it. Um, there were a lot of questions, um, a lot of questions. Uh, I mean, to be expected about um, you know why why we chose to move forward with certain standards. Um, also, the discussions, you know, the debates around certain standards. Um, so I believe the hearing was three hours long. Um, and it was just the first initial hearing. There was some public, there was some public comment, I think. Yes. Um, and I guess they plan two more hearings on it. Is that right, Jody? Yes, the next hearing will be October 25th. Um, so we only got through kind of the first half, which was the um, design standards themselves and the um, new proposed process that goes with that. Um, the second hearing on October 25th will be about the legislative changes, the, you know, potentially making the AH and the WH by right. So that will be the second hearing. And then um, after staff has some time to do some research, uh, there will be a third hearing about the overall project. And, and Jody, do I, do I understand correctly that the, the question of uh, stepping down of buildings close to R1 zones that we discussed intensely is no longer part of this project? Um, it is yes and no. <laughs> um, because of the, the controversy, um, staff had taken that out of the objective standards uh, project uh, because it isn't a required element um, of you know, what the, the state changes are. Um, however, it sounds like um, the council would like that to be brought back and, and just would like it to be settled. So I think we will be bringing back the, the height transition discussion. Thank you for the questions. All right. Well, uh, are there any more questions, comments, or announcements? Okay. Well, not hearing any, I guess we will go ahead and adjourn. Thank you all. Have a good day. Thanks.